Hi, I'm Marcus Curtis from Marcus Curtis Music, and today I'm going to show you how to take any ordinary guitar and plug it into the Behringer X32 and make it sound like an organ or maybe strings or even a saxophone. How about we use the Behringer X32 to make any ordinary guitar create any sound from any popular software synth available to us today? Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is my Schecter Telecaster, and it's a normal guitar with no MIDI hexaphonic pickup. Uh, it's a very nice guitar, has Seymour Duncan pickups in it. But the only thing special it really does is you pull out the tone knob and it splits the coils of these Seymour Duncan pickups. Uh, very nice guitar actually. So let's plug it into our Behringer mixer. So all you need to do this is an audio interface like the Behringer X32 and a software program called MIDI Guitar 2. Okay, from the search engine, you're going to type in Jam Origin. And when the search results post, it should be the very top link. Click on that and that'll take you to the Jam Origin website. And this is where you get MIDI Guitar 2. So what you're going to do is click on Products. And once products loads, the middle column here for Windows and Mac, that's the one you want. It sells for $99, as you can see. Click on Download. So we're using the uh, Windows version, but it comes in three different versions for Mac. We just want the Windows version, so we're going to click on that. And we're going to save the file to our download folder. 
So while that's downloading, we're going to scroll down and we see MIDI bass. And we're going to go ahead and get MIDI bass too. Now, MIDI bass and MIDI guitar come bundled together. So when you buy one, you automatically get the other one. So if we go back to products where we were and you scroll down to more information, this is going to take you back to the main web page. Okay, so we're going to scroll down here for a little bit. And uh, you'll see, well, as we get down a little bit, You'll see where we can purchase the program. Click on that to get a license, and it's $99. Now this is the Roland GR55. It's an incredible unit, but you will spend over 800 bucks on the Roland GR55. You'll spend anywhere from $300 to $450 on those cheap plastic MIDI guitars. The new Jamstick guitar will sell for about $800. Not only is MIDI guitar cheaper than those other alternatives, but MIDI guitar will also allow you to use any quality guitar you have in your collection. Buying a license is pretty straightforward. Just click on order now, or you can purchase your license through the app MIDI Guitar 2 itself. And you can pay with your PayPal account or with an Amazon account, or you can use your credit card. And once you buy a license, you will receive in your email a file that will unlock the program so you can use both MIDI Guitar 2 and MIDI Bass. Now we're going to go ahead and install these programs. We're going to go to our download folder and we'll install MIDI Guitar 2. It's pretty straightforward. Um, we accept the agreement and now we can click on the next and we see our VS folder, VST folder. So we can go ahead and select our VST folder. Okay, we'll just hit browse to uh, select a different folder and you can see Steinberg VST folder is the default folder. So if you have a Cakewalk folder and you want the plugin to go into your Cakewalk folder, it should be listed somewhere under the program files. Just locate your uh, VST folder and then hit next. Now we have the standalone application, the 32-bit version and 64-bit version. We want to install all three of those and uh, just hit install and there it goes. That's how easy it is. So now once it's installed, we're going to go ahead and do MIDI bass. As I said, they come bundled together. One good thing about MIDI Guitar 2 and MIDI bass is that you don't need the internet to unlock the program every time you want to install it. All you have to do is take that file that comes in your email address and point the program to that file and that will unlock the program. And you can install MIDI Guitar 2 and MIDI bass on any computer you own according to the license agreement. So the next thing we want to do is create shortcuts for the standalone version of MIDI Guitar 2. So we're going to hit the start button, go up to MIDI Guitar 2, 64-bit version, and hold down the left mouse button and drag it to our desktop, and there it appears. Now let's do the same thing for MIDI Bass, 64-bit version. And now we're going to right-click and go down to Sort By, and then we're going to go Item Type. So now we have shortcuts for our standalone version. We'll start MIDI Guitar 2 by double-clicking and it comes up and just accept uh, the terms. This is the legal stuff, more or less. Okay, you can scroll through it and read it if you want to. And just click on accept the terms and MIDI Guitar 2 comes up. And uh, we can make it bigger by going to the side and pulling and this will expand the program. Okay, let's center this a little bit better. Now we can load a patch by clicking on the patch area and just choose any preset you want. We're gonna leave it on test piano. After two minutes of playing MIDI guitar, a notification box will come up and we can either buy a license, apply the license we've received in our email or click continue for another two minutes. The next step is to use the Behringer as an audio interface and to set it up to work with MIDI guitar. And we do this by first plugging the guitar into a cord, quarter-inch jack. Next, we're gonna to wanna to run this cable into our direct box and XLR on that side, that side. You can see that this is the input and this is the output, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cord and run it into the input and we're gonna run the output of this like so okay so our next step is to plug the output of the direct box using a quarter inch jack into the input of any effects pedal board we want to use but in this example we will use the boss gt 100 we're just going to plug in through the input real quick and turn it on and you can use any pedal effects you want along with midi guitar too 
So now let's go ahead and check out the back of our Behringer mixer and look at our final connections. So we're going to take the XLR output of our direct box and plug it into the input of channel 15 on the Behringer mixer. Channels 1 and 2 of the Behringer mixer is uh, receiving our GT100 from our Roland device, okay? 1 is left and 2 is right, okay? So these are our connections, quarter inch on this side. This is the cable I'm using, quarter inch on one side, XLR on the other. All right, now that we have everything plugged in the way we need it to be plugged in, we're going to go ahead and uh, get on a computer and get everything working. And we're going to start by uh, opening up the Behringer app. And there we go. We're going to connect it to the computer. Okay, now that the uh, app is connected, let's go ahead and check out the setup real quick. And you can tell that it's connected. Okay, we see our Behringer mixer here. There's uh, two things to point out though. In the mixer section right here, we have a sample rate. You have 48K and 44.1K. It does not matter which one you use. The only thing is you need to know which one you're using. So take note of which one you're using. I'm using 44.1K uh, sample rate, okay? The other thing is the card. Make sure you're 32 in and 8 out. This will make much more sense as we go on, but you have different selections here, and they're useful for other things, but for what we're doing, 32 in and 8 out is perfect, okay? So we're going to close that out, and now you can see that uh, our um, guitar should be right in here, our electric guitar. So if we uh, pull this up, this is our Roland GT100. If we pull this up, we should go ahead and add a little volume from the main fader here. There it is right here, okay. So what we're gonna do is, uh, this is our GT100. This would be like equivalent to whatever pedal board you wanna use along with MIDI guitar, okay? So we're gonna go over to the channel, click on channel, and what we're gonna do is link these two in stereo because the left channel is in channel one and the right channel is in channel two. So we're gonna go to stereo link. Make sure your channel is highlighted, the one you wanna, you wanna switch. Make sure that one is highlighted, click Link stereo, click OK, and now these are linked stereo, okay? So this is left and this is right, and you can see here's our left pan, here's our right pan, okay? And we can mute them both together, okay? So right now we have a, an, uh, okay, we have uh, 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 an electric. Okay, let's go ahead and change the uh, patch to a clean patch here. Hang on. All right, so now we're in a clean patch. Okay, there we go. We've got a clean patch going on here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to mute this for now. Well, we can blend this in later if you want. And, um, and now we're over here on channel 15. This is our dry signal. This is what we need to go into MIDI guitar. You want a dry signal going into the MIDI guitar program because that really affects the tracking of the program. The more effects that you add to your guitar signal, the harder the tracking is and the more latency you wind up getting. So you need a real dry setting going into MIDI guitar. So that's why we have our separate signal right here on channel 15. So if we turn this up, right now we have this down. This is uh, what the guitar sounds like. You might be able to hear it. It's not plugged in. Uh, we don't have any volume plugged into anything. So we're going to have that playing in the background, but we're going to go up to channel 15. We're going to raise the volume just a little bit, and we should have our... This is the signal we're going to be sending to MIDI Guitar 2. Now, if that's not loud enough, you can go over here to where the gain is. You can crank it up from there, of course. Okay, so what we're going to do now is going to minimize this program. And we're going to go over to MIDI Guitar 2, and we're going to start that. Now, we can, if we want this bigger, we can blow it up like that. Or what we can do is we can take it to the side, go over here, and stretch it. And it'll get big like that. I prefer this way when I'm setting it up. You can do either or. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to center it. And now what I'm going to do is go down here and bring in my Behringer mixer. And then I'm going to go back and bring in MIDI guitar. So if I want to pull down the volume, I just reach over here and grab it. Okay, so when I'm playing in here, when I play my, my guitar, it should register in here. 
It doesn't, but we're going to fix that here in a minute. Now, whatever if you've purchased your license, whatever name you use to purchase your license will appear in here. It says license to Marcus Curtis. So uh, that's the name I used, and that's will tell you who owns the license for this program. Okay, so to get this working, what we need to do is go over to where it says interface. Click on interface, and this section opens up over here. And now we have to select our audio interface, and I have several of them. So if I click on the ASIO, pod you can see here's my list of audio interfaces my behringer is listed right here the x usb asio driver so i select that and i go right to the behringer driver now the next thing is i'm in channel 15 so i'm going to select that and go over here to channel 15 and my output remember i have eight outputs i'm going to go and select output seven and eight now the reason why i'm doing that is because cakewalk is plugged into outputs one and two, okay? And I want cakewalk outputs to be separate than the MIDI guitar outputs, okay? Right now we're using the standalone version of MIDI guitar two, but this will also work inside cakewalk if you need it to work inside cakewalk. Let's go ahead and go back to our Behringer mixer, okay? The next thing we need to do is go to routing. Your routing needs to be set up just like this. Now what you might see is this as you open it up we might be on another page up here but what you have to do is go over to the input section okay and then you have to take uh any group here we're plugged into channel 15 so we're going to ignore that group i'm going to take channel 17 through 24 in this example and we're going to go over to the card one through eight here's our first eight inputs okay and then we'll go over to the play side and we can move it over one through eight okay so now we have channel 17 and 24 being used for the eight out of our card Okay, so now once that's done, we should be able to go down here to 17 and 32, and we should be able to play something within MIDI guitar. See, we have it registered over here. And then it should come out right here. If we're in seven and eight, starting with channel 17, okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So channels 23 and 24 should bring up our MIDI guitar, but we don't have anything. Now let me tell you why that is. Let's go over to MIDI guitar. What we're doing is the troubleshooting part of it now because these are problems you might come across. It says no instrument. This is what loads your instrument. So click on this and we can choose an instrument. But what we're gonna do instead of doing that, is we're gonna go and select a preset. And right now we're on the default preset. So we have nothing loaded on the default preset. So let's go down and load a Fender Rhodes. And now we have a Fender Rhodes. You have some things that appear down here, okay? So if we open up the keyboard here, you can see, as I play, you can see what keys are lighting up here. So let's go ahead and minimize this. Now we should have some signal down here. And we do. So we're just going ahead and turn this up right here on this side. Turn this up right here on this side. Now the same thing applies as far as stereo goes. We need this because this is a left and a right. So we're going to go over to channel 23, which is our left channel. And we're going to go ahead and do the stereo link thing one more time. And now these are linked stereo. So here's our MIDI guitar output right here. Now the problem is we still hear the guitar. So what we're going to do is go over to our channel 15 here. We're going to mute that. Now it'll still send the signal to MIDI guitar too, but it will be muted for us and we won't be able to hear it. Now we hear our Fender Rhodes. So let's go over to our Fender Rhodes, which is right here. I'll turn that up a little bit. So I'm using the Yeti mic to record all of this. So what's happening is the sound is coming out the speakers and the Yeti mic is picking it up. So we're gonna go over here to, so if it sounds distorted, okay, it's not, it's not the system, it's just because it's being recorded with the Yeti mic. Okay, so now, here we have our, here's our, um, Here's our Fender Rhodes. Okay, so if we want to change the instrument, we can do that over here. Okay, but uh, let's go ahead and change a preset. Let's look at the uh, drawbar organ. Okay, so now we have more things that have opened up, and just click on these to see what the various things are that are loaded down here that make the preset, okay? So 
We've got a little bit of reverb on this organ too, okay? In the two sections, it says none. We're gonna go ahead and click on the tools and we'll add our keyboard, so there's our, so now we can see what MIDI notes we're, we're playing. So we'll just go ahead and turn this down. It's probably distorting in the mic a little bit. Okay, let's go back to the guitar. Okay. There's our organ. So as you can see, there's different kinds of presets right here that you can you can load, and some of these are guitar. Now, the cool thing about MIDI guitar is that you can blend a guitar tone in with an instrument tone right in here, okay? And then you blend the two together. This is red, this is uh, blue, and you, you can mix the two sounds down here, and here's your master gain, okay? Uh, but you can add more. It does third-party effects, and if you want to know where to get more, you can either go to the website, Marcus Curtis Music, and there's a bunch to choose from over there, or when you go to head to select your instrument, just kind of click on that, click on it one more time, where to get more instruments, and it should take you to a page on the Jam Origin site, and it'll show you a lot of different things that you can download to add. And these are all synthesizers and guitar amps and stuff that you can download to expand the capabilities. I have a lot more plugins on my website, but this will get you started. Notice it has Cakewalk in here, kind of funny. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this out. Now, you can also do the same thing with guitar effects. It'll do like if you have amplitude or, or any kind of guitar rack effect system, it'll play it all third-party effects. To get third-party plugins working, just go over here to where it says plugins, okay? And then you do a scan. Now, this will scan your uh, VST3 folders, which are basically common folders, and it'll add all your instruments right in here. And all you have to do is start your scan. If you have other... Um, folders that you have plugins in then you go into plugin folders and you can add your plugin folder in here and it will scan that folder as well okay and to start a scan it's fairly simple you can do a safe scan or an unsafe scan will detect plugins that might not work inside of this so you're just better off doing the safe scan okay so that's how you add your third-party effects and anything you have will work in MIDI guitar I've found I haven't found anything that I own that doesn't work inside of MIDI guitar MIDI Guitar 2 will also work with Cakewalk, so you can use it in in uh, conjunction with Cakewalk. So you you uh, so you can use it in combination with Cakewalk. So it's a fairly decent program. So there it is, MIDI Guitar 2. In the next video, we'll cover this program in a lot more detail, and I'll explain a lot more of the features. If you own any Behringer X32 mixer, I put together a video series that will walk you through the basics. You'll learn how to do a firmware update. You'll learn where to go to get the app and how to get it working on your computer with the Behringer mixer. You'll also learn where to get the Cakewalk software. It's free software, how to download that and install that. So that works with the Behringer mixer. So this is a series of videos I have organized in the playlist. I will leave a link in the video description. So Cakewalk is a free program. It's a digital audio workstation, otherwise known as a DOM. That's basically software you download onto your computer that turns your computer into a recording studio. And you can use it in conjunction with Behringer to record your music. Now I've made a series of videos and I've arranged it in a playlist and I'll leave a link in the video description and these videos show you how to use Cakewalk with the Behringer X32. And between those two uh, video series that should be all the information you need to get up and running with your Behringer X32 mixer. You can help me out by hitting like and subscribe and this will affect YouTube's search engine and it will encourage me to make more of these videos. And as always, I really appreciate your support and thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.